Lucky here. It's the Pat and JT Podcast. Pat and JT Podcast. So if you liked our Facebook page, it's Pat and JT. You can call us or leave a voicemail. You can text us 402-403-9478. And uh, we just, uh, thanks for listening to our podcast. We're almost to number 200. This is 199. Is it really? Yep. Uno, nine. That's nine. how you say that. Whatever. <laughs> So not Spanish. Uno nine nine. Uno nine nine. Uno nine nine. Nine oh nine oh. No, that's <laughs> not, not Spanish not for one ninety nine. I didn't. I didn't. Who knows what? I, who knows something? <laughs> it's so funny too. Is um, remember a few episodes ago we were talking about Idina Menzel and who she was married to. Yeah, and I nailed it. By the way, <laughs> I, I'm not right. Even a blind squirrel, right? Whatever. Anyway, um, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> um, our old producer Scoop doesn't live here anymore. She's and she's got a kid and she's moved away. She's in Chicago, I think, right? Uh she says is it normal for me for people to yell at your podcast? And she says it, basically what she was saying is it hurt her heart to say JT he was right. Yeah. Um sure but I, a lot of, <laughs> well, can, and that's BS. We got a, 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 a some posts on Facebook around that time too that said I hate to admit, but Pat was right. They were screaming at their pot at their <laughs> like that's a bunch of crap because it's just so rare. I'm right. So I'm right <laughs> some of the time. I'm right. It just happens. Said, a broke clock is bright it twice just, a day. Right. I sometimes sometimes I just I, <laughs> I I'm wrong, I'm wrong a little bit. Sure, my share. <laughs> you but, let's just say you get creative with your answers. But but don't like instantly like default to everything that I like. I've said that to Beth too much. Just let it let it ride out for just a minute. Just see how let it, me let, let me enjoy the wind right, for a second before just, you tear it from my hands. Right, right. Let me just let me just because it was funny because I I love her. She's so great. <laughs> it's she's so funny that she's like. Not not a control freak like control me, but she like likes everything the way she likes it, which is great. Right. Even when she's she, and I love making people sandwiches. Okay, it's my deal. I yeah. love making breakfast and I love making sandwiches. And I'll just randomly say, "Can I make you a sandwich?" <laughs> and she's like, "No, I don't want a freaking sandwich." And then the other night, two nights ago, she's like, "Hey, babe, you want to make me a sandwich?" I'm like, "Yeah!" I jumped off the couch, oh, ran God. in, and and I got my little shadow behind me. She follows me in there, <laughs> and she goes, "Well, get out the butter and get out." And she get out all this stuff. It was a grilled ham and cheese, whatever. Okay. And so she's like, "Well, I'll just put the butter on." She has a specific way to put the butter on. She says, "Well, just hand me the hand me the meat and put this on." She goes, "And just t- turn the pan on." I'm like, so "I'm not making her a sandwich. I'm now her sous chef yes, for her are. making her own sandwich." <laughs> I love it. Now, I'm not going to leave this in your hands. Un- like unguided. No, I'm not going to let you go in there and me not see what you're doing. I was fat once. I can legitimately... <laughs> okay, not once. I'm, I'm getting back there again. But 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 I, I know how to make a sandwich. I can do it. I bet you do. It's not just sandwiches, though, that do that, you know. Did you I see know. that story about that kid that was just eating like Pringles and white bread? Yes. And he went blind because he was so malnourished, like like right. third world country malnourished. That he went blind. That's crazy. I never have heard. I hadn't. I mean, what was it? It was Pringles, white bread, and like uh, like three really b- terrible on. things. Oh, well, good no, things independently. Any one of them not, by themselves is a good thing, but not for seven straight years. No, you can't just eat that. I yeah. mean, you just come on. I can't. I mean, there are things that I will indulge in every once in a while, way too often. And how old? And how old was he? I think like seventeen. And he had was there was there no parents in the situation, or they, well, was it like a? Because there are some people that go eat McDonald's for three straight years, and I'm this. Was he doing an experiment? Well, no, he just that's what he liked, and and I don't know if it was just a fussy eater. Here we go. Teenage boy goes blind. This is awesome. Great. Uh, that's um, an awesome. I'm sure that's a website that a lot of kids have gone on. It's like, <laughs> am I really going to go blind from that? <laughs> Not, not, what <laughs> nope. not what you thought. Not what you thought. No. Um, it's Pringles, white bread, and French fries. It, it just I'm I they said he was extremely picky. That's one of those. I'm sorry, that's this is one of those little soapbox moments when just he's just a really picky eater. No. No. He, he's a D. He's hungry, what he is. is what he is. That that's if he's a really picky eater, then he should be hungry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You'll you'll figure it out. But, I mean, he's just a really picky eater. So all he ate was, here's the list. There was more to it than that. So um, he liked the fries from the fish and chip shop. Apparently didn't like the fish. He liked Pringles, white bread, slices of processed ham, and sausage. That's all he'd eaten since elementary school. Slices of processed ham and sausage. Those were Those only meats. Those are the only meats that he would eat. He avoided certain textures. 
And by age 14, he had some symptoms, like he was tired all the time. No medication, normal BMI, normal height, no visible signs of malnutrition. But then they discovered he was super low in vitamin B12 and anemic. He had not never touched a vegetable, okay? The, the, the closest was, thing is a, ve- a french fry because it's a potato. A That's potato. the closest thing. Fr- french fries, potatoes, yeah, Pringles and french fries. Um, and then a year later, so he showed those signs, right, anemic. A year later, a year later. He, is it anemic when you bleed real fat, easy? What's anemic? Low iron. Oh, so not. <laughs> what's, what's where you prick your finger and you bleed out? Um, oh, that is, I can't, I don't know what that word um, is. I'm going to Google that. You Google that. Scoop, you quit s- yelling at the, <laughs> scoop. the pharmacist. Scoop, stop. Scoop's a pharmacist. That's right. She's a pharmacist. She works at the pharmacy. She's probably like, oh my God, you guys are killing me. Um, anyway, so his vision then after another year had, had worsened to the point of blindness. He was 17. Hemophilia. Thank you. Nothing like anema, but anemia, anemic? Anemia. Yeah. No, nope, hemophilia. Few vowels. That's about yep. it. Um, so then they said, um, high zinc, low copper. Reduced vitamin D, so I'm guessing he was staying in the basement. Big shock. Bone level density was down, so he's probably not standing up walking around very often. Um, and by that time, the vision damage was permanent. 17 years old. Wow. That's, 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 that is too bad. That, I just, that's, that's but bad. you're right, though. I mean, you do hear about people that, you know, they only eat at McDonald's for a year or something like that. But, but you can mix it up with the menu, right? Yeah. Um, you can get a salad once in a while. Yeah. I, I, you know. I don't know. That's or something else, but uh, the pig, I picky, can't imagine picky eater, that. Be, be just when somebody says they're a picky eater, I, I, it just it it annoys me because I get it. You're a picky eater. If you don't, there are certain things everybody doesn't like certain things, right? But to say you're a picky eater, it's like that. You just you want that label. You want you want attention. You want it, I'll be difficult. You're like yeah, I'm when, a picky eater. When you were a kid, most kids don't like vegetables, or they have some vegetables that they don't want to eat. Mm-hmm. And um, we were talking about this. uh, There's a lot of things that that people, as you grow older, once you're familiar with them, you end up liking them. But you didn't have any experience with them, and you're like, I'm fine the way I am. I don't see a reason to eat that Brussels sprout. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. It looks like a little cabbage, and that's not really my thing. But once you you start eating broccoli, you get familiar with it, then all of a sudden you grow up and you eat vegetables. You crave vegetables. Some vegetables, as a matter of fact. I do. I right? do, yeah. Zucchini, squash, love. <laughs> I love them. Yep. Yeah. So it's that's true. It's just becoming familiar. So when you have a kid, that's why it's like, you know, most parents will say, no, at least try it. Just a no thank you bite. We used to call it a no thank you bite. Like if you if you want to say no thank you to that, something you've never tried, you have to take a no thank you bite. A legitimate buy in. Give it a chance. No thank you bite. Yeah. Give it a chance. It's like, it's like meeting somebody new. Yep. And just on face value saying... I don't think I like him. Let it ride. He's got a mean look on his face. Just just try it out. Yeah. You never know. There might be somebody really nice inside that, that scowly face. <laughs> and you might maybe bite into it, him, whatever this analogy is, <laughs> and you find out that he is a mean person, and you walk away. That's totally say, fine. I tried, yeah. but he's a jerk. That's it. I'm done. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that story. I can't. And it's, it's like uh, it's like beer is an acquired taste. You don't you don't want to like you don't like beer first couple drinks and then you uh, and now some, people are like people, I need a beer right the first couple beers even I mean it's like ugh this is awful but you're right and then all of a sudden it's like an ice cold beer in the middle of summer after working out right. so that's really good and then you try an IPA and then you try a little <laughs> cocktail and then yeah it just kind of ramps up from there yeah gateway your yeah. body gives up <laughs> <It's> like, whatever. <laughs> Mind is like, I tried to tell you. You wouldn't listen to Wouldn't me. you just get sick of, what, after that long of eating the same stuff, wouldn't you just get sick of eating it? I don't care if you're a picky eater or not. You would just get sick of eating it. I, I wonder. Well, you just I stop like, eating. I know I can say when it comes to eating, and, and I I like to take, like simplify, uh, planning my life around my meals is a problem. That, that's that's where a lot of people get in trouble. You know, it's like mm-hmm. it, you really enjoy your food or you want to really plan your meals. I can see both sides of this, really, honestly. But it's like on one side, I can say I could eat the same thing every day if I could find that that nutritious, whatever it is that I that I like to eat. I'm fine eating the same. I can eat the same thing for breakfast every day. Yeah. Yeah, I'm me fi- too. I, I'll have eggs, eggs and a piece of toast. I'm good every every day. Sure, me too. Um, And sandwiches. Yeah, I can I can see where I'd get tired of it. I guess because even, even even if you have like a really good Jimmy John sandwich, 
after you've had a couple three turkey sandwiches, you're mm. just like, I really don't want to try. Right. That. Even though you love Jimmy John's, but you just it's just I can't. I gotta have a break. I can't I gotta I can't have any more French fries. I gotta go over and have some more Pringles. My like, fa- and the, and it's all basically the same thing. <laughs> it is. It is. It's so uh gross. My one of my favorite foods is angel hair pasta, the garlic buttery angel hair. It's, it's like a, they're like a buck a box. Mm-hmm. Okay. Seriously, that's a 10 for 10 right there. That's one of them. That's right. I love that stuff. I may have had enough that I don't really want anymore for a while. I can imagine. (laughs) Because, because, you know, it's like, I'll just have a little bit of that with this and I'll have a little bit of that. It's like I got hooked on it. That was my go to. And now I'm done with it. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I'll go back. Yeah. So, yeah, I know. I it don't. may not happen. That's happened with some other foods. I can't think of it right off the top of my head because I haven't had it for a long time, whatever it is. It's not like having aversion. It's just I'm not interested. Yeah. Because I had my fill. Yep, I, I am with you. I really don't want any more of that. Interesting. Um, something, oh, so, so, yeah. so uh, food on yeah. the food tip. Go right ahead. Uh, last night as this uh, yesterday... Would have been Tuesday, though. What was it, to the third? I don't know. Anyway, whatever. Whatever. I uh, was in Lincoln <laughs> with Nick Baugh, because our company, Parkville Media, produces the Nick Baugh. Say, Nick say Baugh that slower and louder. Our <laughs> Parkville Media! <laughs> our company, Parkville Media, produces <laughs> the Nick Baugh podcast. It's not a throwaway. There we go. Okay. Yeah, good point. <laughs> uh, so I was down... Let's do my pen. I was down there and recording him and uh, Jason Peter. Can you... Okay, first off, let's just start. Jason Peter. Yeah, Jason Peter in in his wife owns a place called Clean Juice. Yes, in Lincoln, and so we met there. And so meeting Jason Peter in a place called Clean Juice. Right. And you, everybody knows Jason Peter. If you know Jason Peter, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't, he's a a big guy, a yeller. He's intense. But he's really like he's on. You hear him often on the radio. Yeah. <clears throat> he's one of those. Uh, he's one of those '90s Huskers that everybody loves to have on. He's got an opinion, and he'll tell you what he thinks. He does a really good job of censoring himself on ra- on radio. He's had to. FCC was listening. Mm-hmm. FCC ain't listening right now. No, the podcast that's up, you can get it now. <laughs> Nickba.com. Find the place where you can listen to it everywhere. It's very cussy. <laughs> but it but it's it fits him. Because well, I can't imagine him. And he had it's he was very subdued because at the the Clean the Juice business. closed at eight o'clock. Okay. And um, toward the end, we didn't get rolling until like seven forty-five, and it was just employees in there. And he actually brought he brought his kids with him because he's like that'll maybe keep me from cussing a little bit. <laughs> well, the kids kept going in the back rooms. Every time they go in the back room, all bets were off. And then they finally left. <laughs> and it was talk about a dude that just hearing stories from because in, in during this podcast he was telling stories about the Colorado rivalry that's the, with well, Nebraska. Well, that's the talk. As we speak, we're gearing up for the Colorado game. Mm-hmm. And Colorado has been throwing all kinds of trash talk, yeah. um, and and their former coaches have been throwing some trash talk, and better better to be dead than red. Ooh, right, so dumb. I'm scared. It, it, but he <laughs> he he, lo- he loves it. He still to the, to this day still gets fired up. Like during he was yeah. getting sweaty. His palms were getting sweaty last night thinking about it and talking about. They um, went through some hell mm-hmm. when they because Colorado, as you, I mean anybody that follows football, you already are aware of this. So I'm, preaching to the choir here, but they were a next level obnoxious yeah. at home games. Like people got hurt. Things got thrown at people. Gross things got thrown at people. And even now they have, I think it's their athletic director or their coach or somebody is, or maybe it's the president of the university yeah. um, asking everybody in advance, not Nebraska fans, but Colorado fans to let's please, let's ha- be civil. That's all. That's all. He's been been a that's how low the bar is. Let's be civil, right? And he used, didn't use civil. It was another word equivalent. I don't remember what it was. Um, but yeah, it's and this is the first time we've been back there for a minute, so it's going to be pretty. I wonder when the last pretty time intense. was we played there. Yeah, and it's been well since we were in the Big Twelve, so it's been whoa. Yeah, I think unless I don't think we played any non-conference games against Colorado. Colorado, who knows? The, the internet's right there, but I'm not going to pick it. Somebody's already somebody's already googled yeah, whatever. it. Let so us I, know. Let us know. Yeah, let us know. Um. But you're right. I mean, going there to play uh, for the guys from the 90s in particular, and and now a lot of the guys that were playing in the 90s against our guys, their kids potentially are old enough and on their football team. Oh, for sure. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. They would be. a lot of the 90s guys are going to be there, no doubt. And a lot of ours are going. Mm -hmm. I know that from the 90s. There are quite a few. And I know Jason's going to be out there. Yeah, uh, and some others are planning to make that trip as well. Cause it's going to be, be like a support intense. for the team, and the team is picking up that steam. Yeah, as well because they're they're hearing the stories. I heard Adrian Mont- Martinez talking about that. Just you know, hearing the stories and 
and they're getting it's awesome getting fired up. We'll we'll put a link in our show notes here uh, for for the episode for the for Nick, Nick Bob podcast. Yeah, because some of the stories that he tells and what these guys say about Adrian Martinez and Scott Frost play when Coach Frost was playing for right. Nebraska it was around when Jason was there and just some yeah. of the stories of how they would kind of haze him a little bit. It's it was just funny. Was <laughs> he funny. he did honestly, Scott Frost. If you know the story, and I'm, I'm sure they go through it, but. Uh, if you know, he kind of had a rough go when he came back to Nebraska. Yeah, they did go through it. It's fine. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I had, and clean to it, I had uh, beet juice. It was awesome. I love beets. It was really good. They're really good for you. It, that's they had the whole menu up there. You, I mean, it was really. I don't know if candied beets are as good. Yeah, I don't think so. They're I think real, anything, those are really good though too. <laughs> anything candied, I don't think is good. <laughs> At the root of it, it's kind of like a caramel apple, right? Right. At the root of it, I suppose it's good. Yeah. I love beets. So, like, if you get a jar of beets. And I, I assume there's probably sugar in those. In the jar, yeah. Right? I was, yeah. But I love... Yeah, beets. Love beets. And I that's something else I did not like as a child. Who would? Who would? There's like that beets... Asp- um, not asparagus. Uh, what you mentioned earlier? Broccoli? Brussels sprouts. I Brussels love, sprouts. Love yeah, like those are like... Like almost not exotic, but they're not they're very adult common. vegetables. Right. They're very, <laughs> they're like, they were in my house, but then I, I they're kind of douchey. That. They're like, if you're, if you come over, what are you having? Broccoli? Or are you having Brussels, uh, Brussels sprouts? sprouts? And like, what? A good way to cook Brussels sprouts. And I haven't done it for a while. And I do, I like Brussels sprouts because they're like little cabbages, but cook them in a little bit of milk mm-hmm. and salt and pepper it. I bet that's good. And so you're just a little bit of milk and cook them in a pan. And it's, Delish. it's kind of, they're, they're good. Or just go to Blue and get their Brussels sprouts and their, ca- I think it's almond <laughs> oh, or cashew the, Brussels, see, Brussels sprouts. There you go. Oh, see? So there you go. There's up. that too. But yeah, I want to know beets. Yeah. I've never bought, have you ever had like, I mean, just like a, a beet? Like when you had the beet juice, mm-hmm. was that like fresh beets? Yeah. They just, they just, um, we watched them in the background. I actually have a video. Up. I'm going to post it up there of <laughs> before we started recording, like Nick and I back in the, yeah, in the area where Jason's wife was pressing all the vegetables. Yeah, so it was watched. It was fresh and delish. Interesting. Yeah, I try interesting. Beet. I would try that. I would try. Is there a place like that here in Omaha? To um probably because I know Juice Stop isn't like that. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> I wanted to believe when I first started going there. I'm going to Juice Stop and yeah. get uh, whatever's called the bench press or whatever that thing's called. <laughs> I would love to see you at Juice Stop wearing the bench press. <laughs> well, it's supposed to be high protein. This evidence. I want the super squat. <laughs> They Add a couple have, extra reps in there for me. They actually have names. Oh They're all named God. something like that. That's what you got to say. It's like, <laughs> can I just have the one at the bottom? Uh-huh. Which one is it, ma'am? The one at the bottom. Which one is it? The bench press. <laughs> I want the bench press. Super squat, please. With extra peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> and that is just a lot of calories right there. <laughs> it's like 700, like we talked. Yeah. Crazy. Um, um, I found out that my dot is getting a personality. An attitude? What, no. Well, she's kind of had that, yeah. but in a good way. Okay. And I won't say her name out loud just because it annoys the crap out of me when a commercial plays on television mm-hmm. or if I'm listening to something and they mention that name. You would think they wouldn't. And you know? it trips her trigger. Yeah. I changed the name of the one that I've got at, at work because you have one in your office. Yeah. And if I yelled at mine, yours answered. So yeah, <laughs> it was a really annoying. Mine just can't keep to herself. And you can, <laughs> she's really nosy. She's very super nosy. She's in another room for God's <laughs> sake. And there's only like three names you can change their names to. Which is stupid. Why can't you customize it? Why can't you? I don't understand why you can't, but you can't. So anyway, so I did have to do that. But the one at home has the original name, the A name. Okay. So anyway, I had asked her, maybe it's the weather mm-hmm. or something like that on Saturday or Sunday. And, um, she gave me the weather mm-hmm. and she got done. And I just jokingly, as I'm sick, cause I was messing around with the dog and I was like, thank you. You know, just threw that out there. You're welcome, Jill. Ooh. Would you like to hear a joke? <laughs> Want to play a game? <laughs> and I what? like, I stopped and I go, yeah. Oh. And she says, what kind of pants do storm clouds wear? Thunder pants. Oh my God. And they're terrible jokes too. What? And as, I go, thank you. And she says, have a wonderful weekend, Jill. What? All of a sudden this happened? Did anybody ever... else's talk? I mean, she's she's referenced me before, like if I say in the mornings I want my news brief. And you bet, Jill. Or to it. Er, okay. But, t- but like that's almost conversation. Usually you have to say the keyword to get her going, but she's asking you questions and you're After responding. After I said thank you, and, and almost always she'll respond either, you're welcome, 
uh, you bet or have a great weekend or wow, some, and funny. she always knows what day it is. Hope you're having a great Friday. Hope you're having a good Monday, whatever this kind of uh, good evening, a uh, great morning. It's really, uh, but now she went one step further and now it's super creepy. So she addressed me. You want to hear a joke? What, what if she, what if this, <laughs> she addresses you without you turning her on? Like, <laughs> we'll see Hi, what welcome happens. Home, Jill. Right? Welcome home, Jill. Yeah. I'm waiting for that to happen. Yeah. Ooh, that's, but it was, that's <clears throat> weird. It was creepy. That is very weird. Um, this weekend, also, I got to watch. Uh, finally, got to watch the season finale of Yellowstone. Yeah, uh, season two. Awesome. If you aren't watching it, it's on Paramount as the network. You can watch it online. I do believe too. It's on Amazon, but you have to pay for it extra. Um, and Philo is another service, P H I L O, and that's really a cheap service that has some networks that aren't offered everywhere, and that's it's on there as well. Um, just so if you want to catch up, it's it's super good. But I just found out they're already in production with season three. Yeah. <clears throat> Josh Holloway is coming. Oh, no. From Lost. That's, that's your guy. Oh, my God. That is your guy. Yes. Cra- that's I can't, your dude. Couldn't believe it. Couldn't it believe like it. Christmas in September. It was. It was an <laughs> awesome day because I watched to the end and then something about season three. So I Googled it. And I found the trailer. Are you kidding me? So excited. And I just thought this other young couple, they were these kids were finally going to get a chance and things are going their way. And nope. now I know he's going to come into the picture and get her attention. Yep. That's going to be. Yep, and now there's going to be a fight. And I really like this other guy. He's the manager, kind of like he's the, the head honcho of the ranch for, for Kevin Costner. Yeah. And like Kevin considers him or his character uh, a son. Um, it, we just found that. I was like, oh, my God, all this good, this good stuff. Finally, good stuff. They've been through so much. And then you're going to throw Josh Holloway. And then in the he mix. comes riding into town. <laughs> and I'm thinking, if I were in her shoes, sorry. Well, oh, man. See ya. Dad thinks you're kind of a son, so that's kind of wrong anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go over here. And that's the day Brenda changed when, she, when you came home from work. <laughs> that was the day everything changed. Oh, my God. Yes. And then finally, <laughs> let's see what else we got here. Oh, one other story that was making the rounds, and since the uh, U.S. Women's Open, the Open's still going on right now in tennis, and I, I don't follow tennis a lot. I follow some of the characters, and I like the stories. It's like any sport. Um, you may have seen the video of Naomi Osaki when she beat Coco Goff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was great. Right, and Coco is 15 years old, and she's a phenom, and Naomi invited her in to have that little hit on TV, um, you know, congratulations after winning, and let her talk first. Pretty awesome. At, which was amazing. And yeah. I didn't realize the whole story until I got to kind of doing a little digging around um, because of what had happened to Naomi the year before. Oh, I didn't know. That didn't a know. lot of people were like, that is phenomenal what no. she just did. What happened? The year before, she beat Serena. I, I Okay, I remember that. Right? Yes, so, yes, yes. And everybody booed. Oh, I don't remember that. And then at the presser, it was they were literally, well, this wasn't the outcome we were hoping for kind of thing. And Naomi literally was bawling during the presser where she was being declared the champion. And Serena was, you know, I know, guys, this isn't what we were hoping for. And da, da, da. instead of like, no, 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 wow. congratulate her. Yeah. I'm 23-time winner. And she just kicked my ankle, yeah. you know. Um, but in, so I didn't realize that whole backstory. And seeing her, though, Bring her in, and then she made mention about the fact that they practiced at the same place. Their mm-hmm. dads are both their friends. Yeah, uh, Florida. I think they're both work out in Florida. But it was it, it, uh, seeing that backstory. Yeah, and Naomi. That's by the funny. way, she got beat. Uh, I think just like a day or two ago. So they're in the semifinals. Oh wait, I pulled it up here so I would know because I didn't want to sound like a total idiot. Um, <laughs> the semifinals are coming up in a day or two, and then the finals for the women's will be on the seventh singles. Yeah, yeah. that's a cool video. If you have, if you share it with um, your kids if they haven't seen it. It's, it's pretty, in, pretty, pretty inspirational. The sportsmanship, not even sportsmanship, just a good person. Just being a human being, not, not, being, so, not being self-absorbed and just being socially yeah. aware of what's going on around you and what's your sport. It, it is good. It's good sportsmanship. It was. It just it's, touches you, though, it, because you know how hard that, yes. that, that, that young girl, 15 years old, she's in... In just like the limelight, everybody wants a piece of her, and she's winning, she's killing it, and then she gets beat, and so that that hurt. Yep. But she made a point to say how sweet Naomi had been to her, and she, I will learn a lot from this match. Yeah, I that's remember cool. she said that, and I thought that was pretty. But Serena is still in the mix. 
right now. I don't think she's not the highest seed in there. There's somebody else that was a higher seed that's still in the running as far as the semifinals and the finals. But anyway. There's that's, your tennis yeah. update from Pat and JT. Didn't see that coming, did there you? Is. That's, <laughs> that's gonna be What's the name of something? today's podcast. Didn't what see that it? coming. So what are the what are the terms? What love? Love something, something whatever. Nil. It doesn't, whatever. Never mind. I don't know. Um in and out. Didn't I don't know. see that coming. I don't know. Yeah, that's we'll the just name stop of this there. Podcast, <laughs> we'll just stop there. I'll, I'll, that's then, all the tennis I know I better quit while I'm ahead. Didn't see that coming. Either you've been eating Pringles too long or you should get to Kugler Vision. <laughs> too many Pringles, too many French fries. Go, go to Kugler Vision. The, the good folks at Kugler Vision, if you start your eye care there, I guarantee you, you'll have a much better shot of being able to see what's coming. Yeah. <laughs> Almost, yes. Much better but shot. But if you're thinking about getting rid of the contacts or the glasses and you've, you've got some nerves about it, and that's understandable, you don't because you don't know all the details. Right. Um, start with the consultation, and then you know going forward if you're if you're a good candidate for this, you may see the same day procedure. It's very amazing. Get up in the morning, not even realizing it, but at the end of the day, you could be seeing so much better. Get online at CooglerVision.com, and you can uh, register yourself for your consultation. Pick the day, pick the time, and when you do, there also will be a portion of that that form that you're filling out, uh, asking where you heard about them. Pat and JT podcast. That would be really awesome. We appreciate that. Yes, we do. So like, subscribe, share, rate, review, everything you can possibly (laughs) positive for our podcast. Thanks for listening. Pat and JT Podcast, a Parkville Media Production.